So previously we were adding map markers to the map, but we were having some difficulty with customizing them through the parameters. Every time we wanted to customize a property in our method, we had to add another parameter, and this made things quite long. And then also, adding any events would be very complicated this way as well. So in this lesson, we're going to go through and we're going to fix this method, and we're also going to be able to add events to our markers. So these are the two methods that we had to add multiple parameters to just to customize our marker. And in our main script file, this is where we're passing through our values. And also, it's not very clear what these values are. Is this the longitude? Is this the latitude? And what does this true mean? So rather than pass it through like this, we can create one parameter, and that'll be the options. And this will be just a little different than the default map options, because rather than the map options that Google expects, we can pass through the map options that we expect. So we can pass through the lat, the long, whether we want it draggable, and we can even provide the icon. So now we'll go into our Mapster library, and then we'll get rid of all these parameters, and we'll just call it OPTS for options. And then right here, we'll modify the options. We'll set the value for the position, and then we'll pass through the options in the create marker function. And the only thing we need to do inside the create marker function is set it to the map. And now you can see that we have our customized marker. So every time we want to change something on the marker, we don't have to add another parameter. We just need to add something onto the options object literal. So in this object literal, we can add another property. We can set its visibility, and we can set it to false, and then it disappears from the map. But when we turn it back to true, it reappears. And another thing we can do too is we can add our own custom options onto this. So if we wanted to give it an ID, in this case we'll give it an ID of one. So if we go into Mapster, and if we console.log the create marker function, we can see in the log that we have an ID of one. So even though the ID property isn't something supported by the Google Maps library, we can still add it for our own custom use. So now that we're adding through our own custom options, we can also pass through events. So the way you add events onto a marker is just the same way that you would add onto a map. Up here we're calling google.maps.events.addListener, and we're adding it onto the map. And the way we do it for a marker is just by adding it onto the marker. So we actually can refactor this function to use any type of supported object rather than just a map. And we can do that by getting rid of these parameters and just pass through options as we did below. So for the listener, we'll say options.object, then we'll set options.events, and then as well as options.callback. So now when we're adding a marker, we can check to see if there's an event. And if there's an event, then we're going to want to fire it off. And we can do this by calling the this.underscoreon function. And since this now takes in an object, we'll pass through this object literal. And we can pass through the object that it expects to act on. And in this case, it'll be the marker. But right now, we don't have the marker. And that's because we're creating the marker down at the bottom. So let's move that below the options. And then let's return the marker. And because of JavaScript's hoisting, let's create a marker at the top of the add marker function. And for those of you who aren't familiar with hoisting within JavaScript, it's a feature that adds all the variables to the top of the scope. So even if you declare this var marker down at the bottom, it always gets added up here when it gets interpreted by the browser. And this can be very confusing during certain parts of your code. So always try to declare your variables at the top of the scope, even if they haven't been defined yet, as in this case. So we're setting the marker variable at the top, and then we'll initialize it down here to the create marker function. So our object will be the marker, and then we just need the events. And in this case, we'll go to the options and we'll call the event.name. And then we'll also set the callback property. So now in our main script file, we'll create an event object. In the event, we'll have a name. And in this case, it'll be the click event. And then we'll also set a callback. And the callback will alert, I'm clicked. So now we'll click on this marker. And we can see that we get, I'm clicked. We can even change this and we can change it to drag end. And we'll change the alert to I'm done dragging. And now when we drag it down, we get the alert box after it's finished dragging. So by providing options, we allow our markers to be customized just through an object literal rather than writing all this code surrounding the marker. So everything that this marker needs to do is contained inside of this object literal. So now that we know how to fire off events on markers, we might want to know how to open up an info window. So when we click on this marker, we'll see a little window that pops up that gives us more details about the marker we clicked on. So in the next lesson, we'll focus on info windows.